Good afternoon. <laughs> My name is Ramona Ward and today I would like to talk to you about the basic process for drilling for oil. I chose this topic because I felt that it was a relevant subject, especially considering all the news about the BP oil well explosion and spillage in the Gulf. Um, as you all know, their rig exploded, I believe it was on April the 20th of this year, and because their blowout preventer failed to work, the oil is basically continuing to contaminate the Gulf and just spread to the beaches and messing up people's livelihood down there. While watching all of this on the news, I realized that I don't even know the basic process for drilling for oil. So I decided to research it and I would like to share today with you what I have learned. The first thing that happens when a crew decides that they want to drill for oil is they send scientists or geologists out to a desired site and what they do is they study and test the site to make sure that there is oil even present to be able to drill for it. Once they deem the site suitable for drilling, equipment is brought in along with the crew to actually do the actual work. Uh, the first thing that the crew does is to set up the equipment, which uh, consists of a derrick, which it looks like a cell phone tower, um, and at the bottom of that is the actual drill floor where they will actually begin the drilling. That's where the drill motor or the drill bit tool is actually set up. Adjacent to that is a small compartment usually referred to as a doghouse where the operator sits, and the operator is the person who actually works the motor for the drill. Once they have all of the equipment set up and the crew in place, the first thing they do is to drill the starter hole. After the starter hole is drilled, they insert the actual drill bit, and the, the operator is ready to drill once they put the initial piping into the well. They begin drilling, and over the process of drilling, they use a fluid called drilling mud, which is used to lubricate the pipe. It's actually pumped out through the pipe in order to flush out any type of rock or debris that's broken up during the drilling process. Once they reach their first preset depth, drilling ceases for a moment, and then you have your roughnecks who come in and they disconnect the drill motor from the initial piping. They insert another set of piping, and then they connect the opposite end of that to the drill motor. Once they get that done, then the operator is able to begin drilling again to reach his next depth. Once that depth is reached, the process of roughnecking is done again, and it's a continual process. Once they reach certain depths, they stop drilling, they bring in the roughnecks to add the extra piping, they connect the other end to the motor, they step out of the way, and the driller actually commences drilling again. Once they reach another particular depth, they stop drilling in order to add casing. The purpose of casing is to prevent any type of collapse so that the pipe won't get damaged and so that nothing basically falls apart within the, within the well. The first thing that they do with casing is that they cement the floor of the well. So they put cement on the floor of the well and then they case it all the way around the walls of the well, all the way to the top to make sure that it's sturdy enough for it to hold. Then they recommence to drilling again. Once they reach whatever their predetermined depth is to actually pump oil, they insert a pump which is used to extract the oil out. And then once that begins happening, they're ready to go into the process of completion. Completion is basically when they uh, the gas is um, they. Um, the gas is produced, is, is the oil pumped from the well is actually used to produce gas. Um, that's pretty much the whole process of the drilling. Um, um, that's it. Thank you. 